How do people publish research papers? What is peer review process like? Let's find out. Hi, this is Chaitanya Sampara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas Arlington, and I am at University of Texas Arlington campus in one of our beautiful classrooms. One of the biggest misconceptions about university professors is that all we do is teach. Actually, that is not the case. We spend a significant amount of time on research. Yes, we also teach, but if you are at a research university, the expectations on the quantity and quality of research are high. So if teaching is all that we were supposed to do, why would we spend four to seven years in PhD programs getting trained to be a scientist? Think about that. Because research is the primary goal and teaching is an equally important part, but teaching is not all it. And see, PhD programs are designed to make you a researcher. So whatever scientific research you do, you need to have a certain means to show that you have done this work. And how you show that? You write papers. You first do all the research work that is supposed to be done. And then when you write your paper, you submit it for peer review process. And that can be at either a conference or a journal. So let us try and understand what is the difference between a journal publication and a conference publication and how this entire process plays out. So there could be differences from field to field, but let me take my point of view of the field of information systems. Other fields are quite similar to this. For example, you could be in marketing, electrical engineering, whatever field, right? The basics across all the fields are similar, but I will go with the example of the field of information systems and here how it works. So we have conference publications and then we also have journals. So now the basic difference between a conference publication and a journal publication is that conference is actually an event where a lot of people from a certain region or from around the world come together and they show their research to each other. And usually when they show their research, they don't show everything. They just show their basics, what their findings are and how they did that research. Nothing beyond that. However, in a journal publication, you write your papers, you do not usually go and present it, but then you go through a much more elaborate review process until your paper gets accepted or rejected. So now let us first take a look at how conference publication works. So in my field in information systems, there are several conferences, but let us go by the conference rankings. The number one conference in my field is ICIS or International Conference on Information Systems. International Conference on Information Systems attracts people around the world from all the countries. And therefore, in the field of information systems, this is the most reputed conference. If you can get a paper published there, it is actually kind of a big deal. And on par with ICIS, there are other highly reputed conferences such as Academy of Management Conference and Informs Conference. The key difference between ICIS and AOM is that International Conference on Information Systems is specific to information systems. Whereas in Academy of Management, other fields are also represented. For example, you can have people from marketing, psychology, and so on. Now, the second league of conferences are large regional conferences, such as America's Conference on Information Systems, Asia Pacific Conference on Information Systems, European Conference of Information Systems, and so on. Or America's Conference of Information Systems usually entails Northern and Southern America. And then you have ESIS, which is European Conference on Information Systems. This includes all the European countries. People from outside of Europe can also attend, but usually people from European countries attend that conference. And then we have PASIS, which is Pacific Asia Conference on Information Systems, as you would expect, people from Asian countries usually go to that conference, while others can go, but majority of the crowd is from that particular region. And then, one level below that are other smaller conferences, such as Southern Association of Information Systems, which is about the southern part of the United States. States like Georgia, Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, and so on, have that conference. Now, a key difference between a conference paper and a journal paper is that a conference paper is shorter version and more concise version of the full paper. And the review process is also much shorter and much more concise. For example, if you submit a paper to ICIS, there will be a senior editor, associate editor, and two to three reviewers. Now, the job of the reviewers is to read your paper and give their feedback, and it is one-time review. 
either they like your paper or they do not like your paper. If they like your paper, they will accept it. If they do not like your paper, they will reject it. And once your paper gets accepted, you get a notification that this review team has recommended this minor change here and there. So please make that change and upload the paper. And then you are done. And then you go to that conference and you have a particular time slot and a particular location, a room, where you will go and present your paper and there will be an audience who will see what you're doing. And the purpose of conferences is that you see the researchers in person. You can actually hear their voice. You can see them presenting. You can ask them questions. And you can actually make suggestions. You can give feedback to those presenters on what you think their research is and how you think that can be improved. And that is the whole purpose of conferences. In fact, I have attended ICIS the most. This is my most favorite conference. And I have made many friends and many professional connections. And I have even collaborated with people who I actually met at ICIS conference. So these are some of the pictures and videos of my presentations of research papers at these conferences. Now let me make one point very clear. In my field in information systems, conferences are highly regarded. However, for your promotion, for your tenure case, only your journal publications count. Conference papers are a good indication that you are actively engaging with the research community in your field. But journal papers are what count really. So now in case of journals, we have two top journals that are undisputed top journals in the field of information systems. The two best journals are Management Information Systems Quarterly, otherwise known as MISQ, and Information Systems Research, also known as ISR. So if you have a research paper published at MISQ or ISR, no university will dispute that you have done a top-notch quality work. In fact, whether you go to Harvard, you go to Stanford, Georgia State, Georgia Tech, UT Austin, UT Arlington, everyone will highly regard your MISQ publication and your ISR publication. However, I have a restriction. I cannot submit my papers at MISQ because my dissertation advisor is the editor-in-chief of MIS Quarterly. So as long as he's my co-author, I cannot submit. But he is leaving that position in December and then we will have a new editor-in-chief. So then I can actually submit my papers at MISQ. But now, other than these two, there is a third journal called Management Science, MS or Management Science. Management Science is not an information systems journal or targeted towards information systems. It is across all disciplines in management that can include marketing, finance, accounting, information systems, operations, and so on. A particular edition of MISQ or ISR will have all papers on information systems. However, in case of management science, if they publish 10 papers in a particular volume, maybe one or two papers will be from information systems, a couple of papers will be marketing papers, and so on. But management science is also a very highly regarded journal. Regardless of the university where you go to, no one will dispute that if you have a paper in these journals, such as MISQ, ISR, management science, you have done absolute top-notch quality work. And then there are other top journals such as Journal of Management Information Systems or JMIS and JAIS, Journal of Association of Information Systems. Some universities count these two on par with these journals, but some universities don't. So to be on the safe side, let's say, then the next league of journals are Journal of Management Information Systems, and then we have Journal of Association of Information Systems. Now we have a list of top journals across business fields known as Financial Times 50, which are the best journals in the field of business and management where MISQ, ISR, Management Science, and JMIS show up. JIS is not included in the best 50 journals across all the fields. Now, how does publication process at these top journals work? Let us take an example of, let's say, MISQ, ISR. Is the process is more or less the same? So as you can see, we have editor-in-chief at the top, and then editor-in-chief will assign the paper to a senior editor. And usually, the senior editor makes the final call 
on whether or not to accept the paper. Then senior editor hires an associate editor. When I say hire, assigns the paper to an associate editor. There are a whole number of people who are serving as an associate editor at that journal. Now an important point to note is that the editor-in-chief, senior editor and associate editors are formally associated with that particular journal. They are in fact appointed for that role by that journal and they have formally accepted. In any field, if you want to grow as a scientist, as a researcher, and be recognized by your employer, which is whatever university you're working at, you will can grow only if you can show that you have served at these reputed journals at these roles. And now it should be obvious that when you start your career, you play the role of a reviewer at the bottom. Now, when you have published enough papers and you get promoted and get tenure at a university, then you rise up to associate editor. And then once you have published even more papers and you have established yourself as a reputed scholar, and then you have become a full professor at a university, then you can rise up to the position of senior editor. And then among the senior editors, usually an editor in chief is selected whenever there is a new term for an EIC. Now, how does your peer review process really work like? It is called peer review because you as a researcher are sending your paper off to other researchers who are your peers in this particular field, right? So your peers review your paper and then decide on what to do with that paper. And only when your paper gets accepted and it is published, do you get recognized that you have done quality research. Now let us understand how the review process plays out when you submit your paper to a journal such as MISQ or ISR. When you submit your paper to those journals, the editor-in-chief will receive your paper and then will evaluate the paper on its quality and then will decide whether this paper is a fit with the particular journal, whether the methodology, the topic are aligned with the kind of papers that that journal publishes. Now, if all of that is good, does this paper look like a quality paper? Based on their immediate reaction, they can usually decide whether or not to invest the precious time of the reviewers, the associate editors and senior editors for this paper. If the paper is not good or if the paper is not suitable, that paper is desk rejected. Now, if the editor in chief decides that this paper looks good and it should be given an opportunity in the review process, then based on the nature of the paper, either the methodology or the topic, the editor in chief will pick a senior editor who also does similar work. Now, what happens then is that senior editor receives the paper and then senior editor appoints an associate editor and then it is the associate editor and the senior editor's job collectively or by one of them, usually associate editor picks the reviewers. And these reviewers are researchers in the same field. So all these people are researchers in the same field. So the standard, the normal standard is that we have one senior editor, one associate editor and three reviewers. And I myself has served as a reviewer for MISQ, ISR, and JMIS. I have not served as a reviewer for Management Science and General of Association of Information Systems yet. Now what happens is that once you submit your paper and it is in the review process, first the reviewers who are at the bottom most level will read your paper and write hopefully a detailed feedback on what are the strengths of the paper, what are the weaknesses of the paper, whether this paper is worth reviewing again. If it is, they will make suggestions on how you can improve the paper. If they do not like your paper, they can recommend a rejection. Now a rejection recommendation from a reviewer does not mean that it will definitely be rejected. What they see is that how is the entire review team looking at the paper like. For example, it is possible that two reviewers may kind of like the paper and one reviewer may not like the paper at all. So one of the reviewers may recommend a reject and the other two reviewers may recommend usually a major revision. Almost always, whenever you submit your research paper to a top journal, the outcome, the best possible outcome is a major revision and that major revision is extensive. You have to do a lot of work to revise the paper in the next round of review. Now the associate editor goes through the reviews of the reviewers, let's say we have three reviewers, and then reads the paper on his own or on her own, and then writes detailed feedback about 
the quality of the paper, the strengths, the weaknesses, and so on. And then sends the paper off to the senior editor. And based on all their recommendations, senior editor decides the fate of the paper, whether or not we should give you a second chance to revise the paper. Now what happens at these top journals is that you will never get your paper accepted in one or two rounds. They can even go to third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and even eighth round of review where they assign you a lot of work to revise the paper. You do all the work, you submit your paper again. Again, it goes to the senior editor, associate editor, and reviewers, and the review process keeps playing out until the paper gets rejected, or these reviewers recommend an acceptance, and the associate editor also recommends an acceptance, and the senior editor finally recommends an acceptance. And once your paper gets accepted, the paper is published in that journal. In my field of information systems, on average, a paper right from the beginning when you started working on that research until the paper gets accepted and published in a journal, it can take anywhere between, believe it or not, five to 10 years. So each paper has a long lifespan. Now what happens sometimes, unfortunately, is that papers get rejected all the time. In fact, at MISQ and ISR, the acceptance rate is less than 5%. So more than 95% papers eventually get rejected. And the only papers that get accepted have following qualities about them. First of all, that paper has studied an important topic. Second, the paper is rigorous and the researchers have done extensive work and quality work on their research and the results are accurate and correct. And third, the research paper makes important contributions towards our understanding of the phenomenon that this paper is studying. And that is the reason why, if you want to get promoted, you have to publish papers in these top journals to prove that you are a highly capable researcher. So I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind and God bless America.